This is Wildcat Walkthrough, and here are your hosts, Elena and Aria. Welcome to Wildcat Walkthrough, UNH's premier student recap of all things Wildcats. I'm Elena Grunz. And I'm Aria Kamola. To start this week's show, we send it down to Thomas Storiti with a look into men's hockey at RIT. Hampshire came into a back-to-back -back with RIT on Friday, ranked 10th in the country. New Hampshire dropped the first game by one goal, but won the second of the back-to-back -back in overtime, 4-3. The high-scoring affair started out poorly for UNH as they surrendered a goal 134 and 305 into the game. Those two were the only goals scored in the first period, and the Cats entered the break down two. The Cats did some quick scoring of their own, cutting the lead in half at 324 of the second period and tying it back up at 453. Nikolai Jensen had the first and Ryan Conmey had the second. The next 12 minutes of play saw no goals, but at 16-19 and 18-27 of the second, RIT put up back-to-back -back goals to take the 4-2 lead. The third period saw another quick goal, again for RIT, as they took the 5-2 lead. The Cats were able to put up two more goals in the period, at 6-10 by Conmey again, and at 9-37 by Harrison Bladesdale. Unfortunately, that was it for the scoring, and UNH fell 5-4. New Hampshire's Conmey led the team with his two goals, the first multi-goal game of his career. Sila Clerk led with two assists, recording his third game in a row with a point. Goalie Tyler Muzelic stopped 29 shots in the game. The second of the two-game matchup started the same way as RIT scored 6.53 and 14.26 into the period, getting out to another 2-0 lead. However, the Cats were able to tie it up in the final three minutes of the period. Nick Caffarelli blasted a shot from the slot to the upper glove side corner of the net to slice the lead in half at 17.07. And at 19.15, Sila Clerk sent a wrister past RIT's goalie to tie the game at two apiece, heading into intermission. The p second period saw no goal, and it took 10 minutes of the third period for either team to score. At 9.49 of the period, RIT took the 3-2 lead. It was looking like another one-goal loss for the Wildcats until Ryan Comey nailed a one-timer in front of the net with just 5.3 seconds left of the third period to send it to overtime. With 6.2 seconds left of overtime, sophomore Cy Leclerc scored on a breakaway to win the game for the Wildcats. Leclerc extended his point streak to four games with his two goals. Conmey had a goal and an assist for the Cats, and Steven Sidarian and Luke Reed each had two assists apiece. Goalie Jacob Helston had 21 saves for UNH in the victory. UNH will look to build off the win when they travel to Orono this weekend for a border battle versus Maine. The Cats won both versus Maine last season, both coming in shootouts. For Wildcat Walkthrough, I'm Thomas Streety. The Wildcats are 15th in the nation and travel to 11th ranked UMaine Friday for a border battle. On November 17th, women's volleyball ended their season falling to Binghamton in the semifinal match 3-2. The Cats were up 2-0 against the Bearcats going into the third set. The Bearcats ramped it up and won the next three sets. The Wildcats finished their season with a seven-game winning streak. Swim and Dive came in second at the Bruno Invitational, with Ella Guilfoyle finishing second in the 200-meter backstroke. The Wildcats conclude their 2023 calendar portion of the schedule, Saturday, December 9th at Northeastern University. Women's Hockey took on Harvard November 21st and won 3-0 with two goals from Brooke Hammer and one goal from Kira Judicus. The Wildcats are now 7-7-1 seven, seven and one overall and 4-5-1 and one in Hockey East. They have another home conference game this Friday, December 1st against Holy Cross at 6 p.m. Gymnastics opens up the season Sunday, December 10th with a Meet the Team exhibition. The Blue vs. White scrimmage will take place here at home in the Lundholm Gymnasium at 3 p.m. We'll take a break here, but coming up, Jason Keene takes a look at women's basketball versus Northeastern. Now let's go to Lucaville Nub for a review of the men's soccer team's strong 2023 season. The Sumain Celia of the Clemson Tigers scored the game winner in the first half as the number eight seed University of New Hampshire men's soccer team fell to the number nine seed Clemson. 1-0 on Sunday evening in front of the crowd of 3,745 at Wildcat Stadium in the third round of the NCAA Tournament. The Cats entered the NCAA Tournament as the eighth seed, their highest ever seeding in history. The Cats put on a dominant performance at Wildcat Stadium for the second round of the NCAA Tournament, defeating reigning national champions Syracuse in a 3-0 game. 
This was the seventh consecutive season that the team made it to the playoffs. Only three of their teams had done this with the season concluding, the Wildcats ending with a 13-3-4 record. Eli Goldman led the team in goals with nine, as Bilal Kamal led the team in assists with six. Coach Mark Hubbard now the all-time record of 119-31-19. The Cats also made it to the America East Finals, playing the Bryant Bulldogs here at Wildcat Stadium. Although it wasn't the outcome UNH wanted, there was still much to celebrate after the game. Sophomore back Isaac Hefes, graduate student Liam Bennett, and graduate student forward Georgios Koliantes were all in the names of the all-tournament team. Graduate student Eli Goldman earned the Elite 18 award because of his outstanding soccer and classroom talent. The Cats are looking to build off this phenomenal season. Though it was not the outcome they have, may have wanted, there were still a tons of highs that came off this season. I think every fan can say that we are so excited to see for what's to come. And for Wildcat Walkthrough, I'm Luca Villeneuve. The Wildcats put together an awesome campaign, finishing the season with a 13-3-4 record. After the break, Smiley Deshaies gives us an inside look at the border battle between Maine and New Hampshire's football game this past weekend. Welcome back to Wildcat Walkthrough. Now let's go to Smiley Deshaies with a football border battle recap. UNH football took on the Maine Black Bears on Saturday, November 18th in a border battle to retain the Bryce Cowell musket. The Cats had 19 seniors this year and were honored before the game with their families. Junior quarterback Max Brosmer passed for 271 yards and three touchdowns as the Cats scored five of their six touchdowns in the first half and held the Bears to 34-14 going into the half. Sophomore running back Miles Thomason with 174 yards and two touchdowns, he carried for a career high of 16 times for 55 yards. Grad student Logan Tomlinson led all receivers with eight catches for 121 yards, including a two-yard touchdown. UNH's defense recorded six tackles for loss, three sacks, an interception, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery with seven pass breakups with safety Joe Eichmann recording a team-high six tackles and his team-leading third interception of the year. The Wildcats took the win 44-25 against Maine, improving their record to 58-45-8 lifetime against them. Taking the musket from the Black Bears on Saturday, the Cats have won 17 of their last 20 against the Black Bears. With that, the season comes to an end with the Wildcats' record of 6-5 on the season. With that, I'm Smiley, and we head back to our host. The Wildcats closed their 2023 campaign with a 6-5 and five record. They'll look to replace Max Brosmer and Dylan Lobby next year. This dynamic duo is up for some end-of-season accolades. Cornerback Max Brosmer and running back Dylan Lobby are finalists for the Walter Payton Award, which highlights the best offensive players in the FCS play. Brosmer ended the season with 3,464 passing yards and 29 touchdowns while Lobby rushed for 749 yards and 9 touchdowns, adding an additional 700 yards and 7 scores receiving. That will do it for this week's episode of Wildcat Walkthrough. I'm Aria Kamola. And I'm Elena Grunts. It's always a great day to be a Wildcat.